week 10 on the Corvette build and we've gone upside down and it's probably not the way you want to see your, if you ever see your car like this, not in the workshop, it, you've had a bad day. But So yeah, we're hooking into everything underneath here now. All the bars that we've put in over the last nine weeks, we're now tying up all the bottom wells. We didn't do them, we, did, we just welded all the top. Then we've gone upside down and we've got one, two, three, four, we've got wells everywhere. All these sidebars, all the bottom wells, the pedal boxes, we're welding everything out there. And now we're going to start on the floor pan. Now you can have, you can have a 0.6 aluminium or steel floor pan. Um, in this driver's compartment we decided to stick with the steel. So there's a little uh, 0.95 steel one that we just knocked up and getting there into place there and that's come up really nice just put a bit of a bit of a bead roll deal around there and that's just to tighten it up so you don't get the twanging um from these panels when the car is running so that'll that'll when that's welded in it will be really cool and we're going to continue on the 0.95 metal down to here and then the rest of the floor we're going to do in 1.2 aluminium all with quick release deuce fasteners. So this belly pan here, so you can get the transmission. All these panels will be able to just be zoosed off and taken out of the way. You can't, we can do that out of really paper thin 0.6, but we're gonna do it in 1.2, just so it doesn't stone chip and just get beaten up because you, it's, it's something that you've always got rocks flicking up and throwing panels on the ground when you're in a panic. So we're gonna go just a little bit thicker, just so they're more durable and um yeah we'll hook into this get this steel side done in the first part of the week then we'll get over there and do all those quick release ones towards the end of the week hey you like that buddy pretty good Got this panel here ready to go onto the car now just under where the driver's feet are going to be um, quite a big panel uh, so we've put a bead roll in it like this one up here but this is to take the flex out of the out of the panel so it's nowhere near as flexy anymore and once it's welded into position it's going to really firm it up and and help help the the panel from twanging around so another thing we've done is cleaned up the minimum amount of area that we can um, on all of these spots. So we sighted through these, these holes here, put texture marks and cleaned up only the bit we need to be welding, just so that it's got the maximum protection before it goes to powder coat um, to prevent it from rusting. So same with here, taped off those before dad sprayed out the bottom. So that's gonna be facing the driver if the car was the right side up. And that's just going to sit in there like that. And those those slits, we're just going to try go through them onto that um, that side bar there. So instead of a, a rosette style, this covers a little bit more area, uh, and we think it'll work a little bit better for the um, vibrations and that. So little break on the back here as well, just to drop down to that uh, smaller size bar, that inch bar that runs through there. Um, yeah, and the rest of it's all fitting up nice, so we'll just start uh, laying some beads on it. Oh, it's getting warm, boy. Oh, you didn't commit to the job. Out there. That's a beaut piece. 
It's a bit easy. Yeah. 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 Uh, yep. Do you need a hand? Ah, that guy's really easy. Yep. You can always give it more, but it's a bit hard. Is it 90 cock? No cock, it's a little bit under. Oh. It's going to touch more. Wait, cock. A bit more. How about now? How about now? Oh, that's good, mate. All right, it's a miserable looking day here in Perth, but on the plus side of that, it means we can't go and do our normal job. So we've got all the boys on deck here in the shop this morning, and we're ripping into this floor. Um, it's coming along really nice. I think we just had this first panel sort of in place the other day, but that's all welded out. We've got our nice little rolls in here just to stiffen the panel up, and she's, she's beautiful. She's come up really nice. We talked about not doing rosettes here. We tried uh, putting little slits there and doing a longer weld, and it worked pretty good. It's made the panel super stiff, but it did put a little warp in there, but the point nine's really, it really is subject to... Um, getting a bit of a woof in it because it's so thin. But we've moved on to the seat section from there and we're doing that in three pieces just because of the, the amount of shape in it. So we've got one more to go here. So that's gonna go in there like that. That's gonna almost finish off this side. We've got one more little panel to go in there. And as we talked about in video number three, when we were making these body mounts, we talked about that the floor was gonna come around, the body goes on here, and we talked about the floor sealing up. Well, that's what we were talking about. You, might, you would have thought we were full of shit, but it was actually, it was actually a method to our madness. So yeah, that's, that's coming up really nice. Instead of doing rolling it over the bar for these ones, we actually decided to put it in the bender and just break them like that. But uh, it's, it's, that's coming up really cool. And as you can see, even though this is underneath and you're never gonna see it, we're still doing a fucking schmick job and making everything turn out absolutely beautiful. Then from there, once we finish these steel ones, we're moving over to the aluminium panels. So this one, Troy's just put a brake on it. He's done a little radius in there. So that's going to go into the engine bay. These ones are all going to be deuce fastened on the sides. So when you want to rip the transmission out, that'll just click over there, drop down, and that'll be the removable panel for the transmission. Right, I've got this middle one here too. Cool. Just made that. It's gonna drop it over there like so. We're gonna take this Zeus, this, this Zeus tab here. We're gonna pop this in there like that. This panel will go over the top of the Zeus tab. Then this one will come along here, drop over the top, Zeus through the bottom. Happy days. Love it. Radio, so got the floor 90% knocked out and mocked up now. With uh, finished off the seat drop, uh, all three panels welded up in there, as well as the one going down to the uh, side skirt there on the body. So that helps fill out the the cabin and keep everything out of the cabin. Dad and Troy bead rolled all these uh, panels up with a step roll instead of a bead roll which looks a lot nicer for the floor. Uh, we also stuck with a steel panel here on this side. Just because of how it's stepped down here with the firewall, it was just easier for us to use a piece of steel and weld that in, as it's not really a panel that gets removed anyway. So this one and the foot box for the um, pedals is steel, the rest of them aluminium. Got this other one, this other long strip here for the side skirt knocked out uh, on this side, and that's all tacked into place and these panels are ready to get deuce tabs mocked up to them and start getting them deuced down and it'll be looking really trick. Moving on to deuce tabs now. 
just using this piece of angle on here to find our flat spot across the uh, transmission panel there and pretty idiot proof way of doing it just holding the deuce tab up to the bottom of that piece of angle line put an attack and then we can see what it does and, and how we like it we just lined it up with the back of the engine plate there and then went middle of the deuce tabs so gonna put a couple more at the back here and then we'll start moving on to the other panels <laughs> Okay, super exciting moment on uh, Friday afternoon of week 10. We have completely finished the tin out of this car. Uh, from the rear firewall, front firewall, floor, everything, we are completely finished up, locked out, she's sealed up, and we can't be more happy with how everything's turned out. We've got, uh, as we talked about at the start of the week, we've gone all steel, in the driver's compartment, you can go 0.6 steel, but we, we've decided to go with the 0.95 because the driver's compartment is a sacred area. So we want to be a little bit, a little bit over the top. We've done our three pieces over the seat bulge. They came out killer because of this big step down in the front, in the front area here. We decided just to put a steel one in there, just because it's so much easier to have these removable panels all at the um, main rail height and then this area being dropped down like it is, we thought we'd just keep that steel. Yeah, so that's turned out really mint. And yeah, th these panels, we'd, we, we, th these are all gonna be countersunk. So uh, this, is, this is the little tool we use for countersinking. Get this one in behind, put this little clout on top, bang, that gives you a countersink. That's another one of Wayne Keyser's marvels. And then the nice countersunk ones go in there and it all sits, it'll all be sitting dead flush. So these are just ones that we've used. We've had to get a number of what we needed to um, have the full countersunk deal. So we've just used a few bits and bobs. I mean, half of them aren't even in yet and it's still sitting real beautiful. So couldn't be happier with how everything's going there. And we're going to... Yeah, we're going to do all the countersinking. We're going to order some all the countersunk deuces for it. These are all going to go on the pile over there for powder coat. And we will never look at a piece of tin again on this car. We're going to move on to the diff and some of the more exciting stuff. Great success. All right, today we've moved on to our track locator, wishbone, whatever you want to call it. Basically, it just controls where the, where the track of the diff sits. So you see how the diff going like side to side like this that is this locates the the track of the diff there's many different ways that, that, that it's done in lower horsepower cars it'll just have a the most simple way is a diagonal that goes through this bolt and this bolt here and you just lengthen or shorten that bar and that locates the diff that is the most basic every super sedan would have it for the last 30 years uh, but in higher horsepower applications it, they go for something like this our tirana had an X bar, which just had two bars that linked the two bottom four link bars together. So that wasn't adjustable in any way, but that still kept it, kept it in track, but had no adjustment. So yeah, this is the wishbone deal and we're just looking at fitting it up. So first of all, it's supposed to, this is where it's supposed to go into this bar. And there, there are two brackets, but this chassis just happens to have two big bars right in the way. So we contemplated flipping it around the other way, which will still locate the track fine. And we thought about offering this bar in, making a bracket and mounting on this bar. 
like that, and then having a single point at the front. But when we got talking to our um, the smarter members of the team in Blaze Hanson, he brought to attention that when we wanted to when we want to put rear steer in the car, which means cocking the diff in a little bit like this, or vice versa, you can't do that. It's it's going to try and rotate the. When we, when we try and put rear steer, it's going to drag the diff and pull it to one side. So luckily, we checked in with, with Blaze and he confirmed that we must have it this way around. So, and that's for the simple reason that when we cock the rear steer in, the diff will just pivot on this, on this right end. And we can do, I mean, you can do it the other way we had it, but we just have to reset everything. This can be done at the track and there'll be no issue. We can just... Put a bit of rear steer in, the diff will just pivot on this rod, so that's how we're going to go, that's how we're going to do it. So then, we've got all the steel bracketry to mount this rear one, and it's, it's all made to go on a sheet metal diff. We've got an aluminium diff. So we've had to come up with a, we've come up with a plan that we're going to put a steel plate over this little point here, this centre brace of the diff. We've taken the studs out of here, and we're going to lower that back on, make a steel bracket and then mount all our hardware off that steel bracket. So today we're getting into to getting these studs out, getting a couple of bolts that go through, a nice strong plate on here and we're gonna get this end done and then we're gonna move on to that end and that'll be us located. Got the uh, wishbone pretty much fully blown in at the front here. Uh, might just put a couple of gussets or something on there as it's quite a um, strenuous part of the car. Fully welded the outsides and just came around the corners a little bit in there. Uh, and then to move to the back, we got the, this is one of Tim's kits again, uh, as well as the wishbone is his uh, mounting kit for the back. This is made for a um, sheety housing, so a sheet metal diff. But we've just gone off these two bolts on the Mark Williams uh, modular diff and made a plate. Dad cut that big plate out and we're just going to weld this to that plate. That should work pretty good, I think. Um, probably nice and strong to keep the diff central in the car. So we'll work on that now, get them all tacked into place and we'll be finally have no more Tim McCamus kits. All right, guys, that's going to be it for week 10 of the Corvette build. Uh, as you've seen, tin work all done pretty much. Pretty happy to be washing our hands with the tin work. And um, we moved on to welding out the uh, sway bar and stuff like that. As you can see, Connor's done some nice welds on these little tabs. And he's just started this end here, but we ran out of gas yesterday. So he's gone and got a new gas bottle and he's gonna blow those in today. So we're moving along still with this Corvette project. So if you like what we're doing, as always, like, subscribe, comment, share it around, tell your friends. And yeah, again, thank you for the support. We'll see you week 11.